As always, I promise to withhold a long intro as long as you promise to like and subscribe. I'll link my recap of the final season of Attack on Titan Part 1 below in case you missed it. Nevertheless, enjoy. We start Part 2 as Flock, Hanj, and the Zeke Retrieval Squad find a near-death Levi Ackerman. As Flock is about to shoot Levi, Zeke appears from the body of a collapsed Titan. It's odd because besides the fact that he's completely naked, the Titan sucked in steam upon its death. Zeke's confused because he was somewhere else, where a strange girl was building his body out of soil, and he realizes he was at the paths. Hanj uses Zeke as a distraction to escape with Levi, and the Jaegerists leave with Zeke. In Shiganshina, Eren transforms for the first time since eating the Warhammer Titan. The Marleyans launch their assault as Peek escapes with Gabi. Yelena recommends Eren hides using the Warhammer Titan's power, but he ignores her. He fights both Reiner and Porco at the same time. Peek snipes him with her cart titan cannons, and it starts to look like Eren is going to lose. Onyakapone frees Eren's old friends from the scout corps and begs them to save Eren, even though he's against the euthanization plan. As Reiner is about to kill Eren, Zeke appears atop the walls around Shiganshina and throws rocks at him. Eren makes his way towards Zeke as the rest of the Eldian military is released to help in the battle. On their way to the battle, an Eldian soldier gives Falco over to Colt and Gabi to take him home. Falco professes his love for Gabi as they try to leave the battle. Peek and Commander Magath pretend to be dead and launch a surprise sniper shot at Zeke, nearly killing him. Zeke screams, transforming all the Eldians who drank the tainted wine into titans. Falco also turns into a titan, and he kills Colt and eats Porco. Eren ditches his titan form and runs towards Zeke, but Gabi shoots his head off with an anti-titan cannon. Zeke catches Eren's head before he fully dies, bringing the power of the Founding Titan and a Titan with royal blood together. They're transported to the coordinates where all paths converge, an endless desert where time is both meaningless and infinite. Being of royal blood, Zeke is chained up. The strange girl from earlier, the founder Ymir, appears, and Zeke asks Eren to force Ymir to euthanize all Eldians. Eren betrays Zeke and refuses to do it, saying that there's no way in hell he'd go along with such a messed up plan. You'll see in a little bit why this statement is so funny. But Zeke plays an Uno reverse card. As Eren asks Ymir for her power, Zeke reveals that he tricked him. Zeke's chains were an illusion, and Ymir only responds to somebody with royal blood, so Zeke was testing Eren's resolve. Even after Eren's betrayal, Zeke refuses to give up on him. He thinks Grisha brainwashed him so he sets out to bring Eren through their father's memories to show him what a truly horrible man he was. They find out that Grisha found the royal family long before he slaughtered them, but decided not to slaughter them just so he could have some more time with his family. In one of the memories, Grisha is briefly able to see Zeke, but we don't know how. When the time finally comes for Grisha to kill the royal family, we find out that he actually couldn't follow through with it. He decides not to kill them, which contradicts everything we've seen so far in the show, and this enrages Eren. He talks to his father, who is somehow able to hear him, and convinces him to kill them. Eren reveals the Assault Titan's secret power, the ability to see the memories of future Assault Titans. So it's pretty complicated, but basically Eren is creating memories of himself talking, which are being transmitted to the past so his father can hear him. After slaughtering the royal family, Grisha is briefly able to speak with Zeke through Eren's memories. Grisha apologizes to Zeke for being such a terrible father, and begs him to stop Eren before he destroys the world. Zeke orders Ymir to euthanize all Eldians, and Eren chases after her. At this point we get a flashback arc of the life of the founder Ymir. I'll recap it shortly. When she was a child, Mir's village was invaded and she became a slave. A pig goes missing, and the slaves collectively blame it on her, so she's hunted like an animal. She falls down a tree and lands in an underground lake. She makes contact with a parasite looking creature and transforms into the first titan. Since she has nowhere else to go, she returns to her master who is just hunting her. He uses her powers to expand his tribe, Eldia, and decimate a neighboring kingdom, Marley. Ymir carries his children, giving birth to three daughters, Maria, Rose, and Sina. An assassin attempts to kill the king, and Ymir saves him by sacrificing her own life. Realizing he lost his most powerful weapon, the king chops Ymir's dead body and forces his children to eat her, giving them and their descendants the potential to turn into titans. 
back in the coordinate, Aaron catches up with Ymir. He embraces her, telling her she doesn't have to be a slave to the royal family. She starts bawling and gives Aaron her powers, transforming him into a titan that's far larger than even the colossal titan. Aaron starts the rumbling and calls forth every single colossal titan from the walls. Armin realizes that it's way overkill, so Aaron wants to do something more than just crush the alliance in Marley. Aaron uses Ymir's powers to send a message to every single Eldian, saying that he's undone the hardening of Paradis's walls, and the titans within are marching to trample every inch of the world beyond the island until every last life beyond the shores is wiped out. After the speech, the Eldian soldiers turn titans, go berserk, and start attacking the remaining Eldians. Gabby and Reiner escape. Gabby sees Kaya about to be eaten by a titan, so she saves her. In return, Kaya forgives her and helps her get out of the danger zone. Mikasa, Armin, John, and Connie retrieve Falco, who's now a titan shifter. Connie escapes with Falco, intending to use him to return his mother back to human. The remaining scout corps members kill off the remaining titans, and as a result, take out many high level military officers including Pixis. Flock then begins restructuring the Eldian government, detaining the anti merlean volunteers, including Yelena and Onyakapon. Gabi meets up with Armin and Mikasa, begging them to stop Eren and save Falco. Armin agrees to take Gabi to follow Connie to Ragako and convince him not to sacrifice Falco. While Armin and Mikasa are on their way to Ragako, Levi wakes up. Him and Hanj confront Magath and Peek and ask for their help in stopping Eren. Connie and Falco reach Ragako, and when Connie is about to feed Falco to his mother, Armin tries to jump in the mouth first so he would die instead of Falco. Connie saves Armin before he's eaten, and seeing Armin's resolve convinces him to let Falco go. By random chance they run into Annie, who was released from her prison when Aaron undid the hardening in the walls. They then form a squad containing Reiner, Peek, Maggot, Annie, Falco, Gabby, an injured Levi, Hanj, Connie, Armin, Mikasa, and Jean. The squad rescues Yelena and Onyakpon before Flock executes them, and they escape Shiganshina. They decide to steal an airship from the Azumbitos, who are located at a dock. When they arrive, they find an army of soldiers guarding it. After a long talk, Magath apologizes for everything Marley has done to Eldia and begs the Eldians of the group to stay back while the Marleyans attack the dock. The Eldians accept the apology, but refuse to stay back. Armin and Connie run straight to Flock, saying that they followed Peek and the Marleyans all the way to the dock, so he needs to ready the airship so they could follow him. As Flock is about to kill the Azumbito mechanics they need to pilot the airship, Mikasa flies through a window and saves them. Flock realizes that Armin, Connie, and Mikasa betrayed the Jaegerists and orders to kill them all. Reiner and Annie transform and start wreaking havoc, and Army and Connie are forced to kill their old friends. The Azumbito mechanics say that they need half a day to service the airship before it can fly, which would be too late to save Luberio from the rumbling. Kiyomi Azumbito recommends that they should tow the airship to a Marleyan city called Odiha, where they own a hangar and have the ship service there. The only issue is that the rumbling is already on its way to Odiha, so they need to service it before the Titans arrive. So they all decide to board the airship, but Reiner and Annie are being overwhelmed. Falco decides to use his jaw titan powers, so he runs off, but he's unable to activate it. The Jaegerists call for reinforcements, but the train gets blown up. Connie, Jean, Peek, and Mikasa join the fight. As the airship is about to be blown up, Falco finally transforms. Flock tries a last ditch attempt to blow up the airship, but he's shot down and barely misses. They decimate the rest of the Jaegerists, but Falco goes crazy and attacks Peek. Peek holds him down while Magath cuts him. They finally leave, but Magath stays back to hold the rear. He's about to be killed by the remaining Jaegerists, but Sadie saves him. Sadie reveals that he was the one to destroy the train with Jaegerist reinforcements, and together they board a manned ship on the dock. They line the ship with gunpowder and blow it up, with them still inside. The final episode of the season is basically a flashback episode of the first time Aaron and the Scout Corps reach the outside world. Once again, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. As they reach Marley, they're pickpocketed by a foreign boy. The Marleans are about to execute him. And, but the scout corps decides to save him and run. 
the boy then steals Sasha's purse and flees. They meet the Azumbito and plan to attend a forum held by a group called the Subjects of Ymir Protection Group. They realize Aaron's missing and leave to look for him. Mikasa finds him outside a camp where the foreign boy stays at. An old man invites them in and they party the night away with the rest of the camp. They attend the forum, but realize that the subjects of the Ymir Protection Group only want to protect Eldians from other countries, and still hate the Eldians inside Paradise. During the forum, Eren disappears for the final time until they see each other in Liberia. We see Elena inform Eren about the euthanization plan, who then tells Flock that he'll pretend to go along with Zeke's plan. This is because the military police are trying to force Historia into becoming a titan, and eating Zeke and he wants to save her from that. Eren then talks to Zeke about Mikasa. We learn that Eren made up the idea of Mikasa's Ackerman blood forcing her to protect Eren, and that she truly loves Eren. Back in the present, we see a blockade created by every military working together. Nearly every cannon in the world was brought together to stop the rumbling, but the Titans still break through it. The season ends as Eren and the Colossal Titans reach Liberio. Alright, that's it for me today. I assume you held up your end of the bargain, so I'll skip the long outro. Bye.